Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. What we're getting ready to do is we're going to be making some bacon. Um, we have got, I think there's 12 packs of bacon right here that has been vacuum sealed, but we're going to have to open that because we're going to fix up a brine basically or a rub to go on the bacon and I'm going to mix it up in this right here. So I've got some bags that once we mix it, um, and put the rub on the bacon then it's going to go in the refrigerator for about four days in these pans right here and then I'll take it out and we will smoke it in the smokehouse. Got the dogs interested in it too. I'm fixing to put in some black pepper. Let's get this opened up. And we're going to use four tablespoons. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. Okay. Got that in the box. Make sure we got it on there pretty good. I'm just going to kind of mix this up somewhat. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this maple syrup and we're just going to rub on our bacon. This is basically to help bind to just hold um, the rub that we actually made. We'll turn that over. Do the same thing on the back side. We've got quite a few to make so I'm going to use this a little bit sparingly, but this will also give it some flavor. Okay, then we're going to take our mix, or our rub. I'm going to put that all over there, rub it in real good. Flip it over. Do the same thing to the other side. Like I said, we'll take this bag and we'll put that in there. Look at that, ain't that a beauty right there? Tell you what folks, I can almost taste this. Kind of like a combination of the, the uh, smoked bacon, sugar cured bacon, 
and some of that other stuff that you can buy in the store. All right, look at there. Isn't that beautiful? Take this, slide it down in the bag. All right, there it is right there. I've got the ham right here, still a little bit hard. I tried putting it down inside the bucket and it wants to make the bucket oval shape, but as it thaws out, it'll take better shape on the bucket. But anyway, I just thought I'd open it up here, let you see it before I mix another batch of this stuff up and put it down in there. So that's what we've got. We've got a good size ham right here. So what I'm gonna do is mix up this last batch of stuff and I'm actually going to submerse it in that bucket for a couple of days then I'll take it out and I will smoke it. Add brown sugar. I'm gonna add what little bit of maple syrup I've got left too. That ain't gonna hurt nothing. I'm gonna take this, whoops, last bit of salt here. The black pepper. Two, three, how about that? Four. I think I'm going to go ahead and put some of this in there as well. Not going to hurt nothing. Okay, I put two gallons of water down in there and I tried setting it down in there but it didn't fit because it's just too long so I cut a portion off of it. I'm going to try sliding it back down in here again. Okay, then I'll take this piece right here and we'll slide it down into the side of it right there. What we'll do is we'll put a lid on this and let it set a couple of days and then we'll take it out and we're going to smoke it. All right, friends, now that we've got that bacon and that ham curing, then let's go back down here to the timber frame workshop because I've got one joint left and then I'll be done with this paste. All right, friends, now we're gonna go down, we're gonna build us a fire, and we're gonna start rendering some lard. Um, I've got more up at my sister's house in the refrigerator, but I brought a bag of it down here today. You know, I could show just working on the timber frame, 
But I'll tell you, you know, when you live on a homestead, um, you have to multitask. And I think that it's important that I film what it's like to live on a homestead. That's why you see me jumping around from job to job a lot, because I've got a whole lot going on up here. So once we start that lard rendering, then we can jump over and work on the timber frame a little bit. So let's go down here and see if we can get all that going. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take my big plane, otherwise known as a slick, which I use on my uh, timbers. I'm going to kind of clean the top of this stump up. It's got a lot of debris, uh, fungus growing on it, so we're going to kind of clean that off, get us a place we can work at. So I've got some pine rosin right here that and some pine chips down in there. We'll get this started and then we'll put our kindling on. believe we're safe to put this on now. I think what I'm going to do is cook this about another hour, cook out what I can out of here, then we'll start putting that in the jars because I just got, I don't know, maybe about two inches floating on the top right there. <laughs> I haven't even hardly done half of what I've got.
bag. There. There we go. We'll get this thing off of it. Now, see guys what I mean about neighbors helping neighbors? I called him and he ran over here just like that. Yep. Sure did. <laughs> I told him this kettle, I don't know, what do you think it weighs empty? 50 pounds? 60, no, I, I 60 would, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Um, but then when you get almost, I don't know, what's that, four gallons at least? Mm -hmm. At least. Of liquid in there, makes it heavier. I did lift up on it, but it, I thought that's too much. I'm gonna call for help. This portion right here, I'm gonna feed it to the chickens. They will love that. So, thank you for coming up and helping me get that off of the fire. You're always bailing my bacon fat out of the fire, aren't right. you? <laughs> Daily almost it seems. <laughs> All yeah. right, he's got to get and make a phone call, he said, and then we're going to uh, stick this in jars. All right, what I've got is basically a strainer and sort of a funnel, and then my ladle. What we're going to do is we're going to take and fill these jars up, and then I'll let them set until they're totally, totally cool because we don't want any condensation on the inside. Then I'll put the cap on it. And it'll be good, I think. I don't know, what's the shelf life? Like 50 years? <laughs> but anyway. You know, I've also got some cheesecloth. All right, friends, it is time to smoke a ham. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here where we were rendering lard, gonna bust us up some kindling, bring it up here to the smokehouse, see if we can get some of that hickory wood going, and we're going to get that ham out. We're gonna hang it up and smoke it for the next two days. The next thing we're gonna do is make us some kindling. This is some maple that I had a friend that gave to me to start our fire with bust us up enough to start a fire down here because i've still got some more lard to render and we're going to be smoking the pig or the ham at the same time This right here is a bag of fat back. So this is why, or that's why I'm doing it separately. I'm actually gonna cook this down, then I'm going to smoke it. And I'll tell you what, when you put those in beans, really tastes good.
All right, my temperature is 150 degrees. And we are smoking. I actually came up with 12 jars of lard from that fat back, but I think I've got one more in there, so I'm going to run up here, get another jar, and finish that off. Well, I actually went up and got some wood from a pear tree up at my sister's house. It's smoking real good. It's maintaining about 150 degrees in there. So everything is working out great. Well folks, why don't you meet me up there by the smokehouse because I believe it's time to pull that ham out. Oh baby, look at that. Is that not the prettiest thing you've ever seen? Check that out. Alright guys, just to show you See that inside right there is not done, but the outside is. Oh, that's going to be so good. We ended up with about 30 pounds, I think somewhere in that neighborhood of bacon. So what I'm going to do, we're going to rinse this stuff off and then we're going to pat it dry. Too much. And then we're going to smoke it. There we go. So there's one. Tell you what folks, uh, when you're working up a hog and you're by yourself, it takes about a week. I have worked, um, this is Friday, I have worked since Monday on this. Not only chasing after fires, rendering lard, um, smoking the ham, and now I'm fixing to smoke the bacon. So um, you might as well, if you're by yourself, figure on about a week to work one up. But it is so worth it because we rendered a lot of lard and this is a lot of bacon and We've got so much uh, sausage and pork chops and different things uh, from that. Um, it's going to be a good winter at the homestead.
You know, as I work on these timbers, I can't help but think of all the man hours that were logged with uh, the early pioneers making their cabins. They had to go to Milo's, just like I do, which is out there in the woods, fell their timbers, bring them back, and basically work them up by hand. You know, I've actually had some people ask, where did I learn to do this? I have watched, you know, them build timber frames on YouTube. Um, but, and, you know, there's all different kinds of joints and people do different things different ways. I just do mine to suit me. And, you know, like we've said before, this channel is not a tutorial. This is just our life here on the homestead. So, anyway, um... That's it. But I don't see many people doing this right here. This is a little bit added extra. Um, so, you know, if you guys like the look of this, this is called a foot adds or just an adds. And that's what will do the trick. That's what will make it look old time. Yeah, I'll tell you what, multitasking on the homestead, running back and forth, checking the fire. So, but yeah, you got to keep that right or else that bacon is not going to turn out right. So I'll meet you up there. Temperature says 150. I had actually cracked this door a little bit. This is actually the most efficient way to um, regulate the heat. That is letting some out, and I want to keep the door closed down there, primarily, hopefully, to drive the smoke up in this direction. But there was a little bit too much heat coming up here, so I had to let uh, some more out. I guess we either need a bigger one or need another one on this side. But anyway, it's been maintaining about 150, and I've already turned the bacon once, but wait till you see it. Well, we finally got all that pig worked up this week. I, I knew that this video was going to have a whole lot of that in there, but uh, it is all worked up and put away. So it's going to be a great winter, like I said before, here on the homestead. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Me, Dolly, Smokey, we really appreciate you stopping by, hanging out. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.